this concept of chicken or the egg, right? Is the trigger point primary? Is it secondary? Is it some sort of a physical sign of something else? What's happening when myofascial pain is, uh, becomes chronic and becomes amplified? Well, as you know, one of the ways it can occur is repetitive unusual movement, which can cause motor end plate dysfunction and taut band formation. The muscles become weak and atrophied. You get shortened, hypercontracted sarcomeres and lengthening in the rest of the taut band, right? And this is called essentially a myogenic component. The trigger point is an active source of persistent bombardment into the dorsal horn. But before it gets to the dorsal horn, this is the critical structure, the dorsal root ganglion. Why is it so critical? Because it's releasing neuropeptides in two directions, orthodromically and antidromically. Now, what else do we see here? Well, it was going to show you, you can have activation of the intermediate horn through spinal facilitation, activation of the autonomic ganglia, and that will result in, potentially, then you get a vasoconstriction, right? Which can, can further contribute to the dysfunction in the muscle because of poor uh, oxygenation. So this has been called a vasculogenic component. Top-down approach, as, as it were, so that you can influence the dorsal horn activity. So as you can see here, it's not a peripheral or central. There is a spectrum of sensitization. And the changes that can occur in the periphery and the central are what will determine how much pain someone has. And then the, the treatment approach will depend upon where you think the mechanism is in that particular patient. This is myofascial pain syndrome. These, this is the same syndrome that we've done all of our clinical studies on, have increased limbic system activity, and they have decreased activity in the contralateral uh, dorsal hippocampus, which is that part of the brain that allows you to downregulate your stress, right? So now it's a perfect time to ask the question, which is the chicken or the egg, right? And so I, I, I described the difference here. It's a key difference for clinicians because it really describes where the primary pathology is residing. So the integrated hypothesis states that the um, trigger point is residing here within the region of primary hyperalgesia. In other words, it's the cause. Whereas the neurogenic hypothesis suggests that the trigger point is residing here in the region of secondary hyperalgesia, it's in effect the effect. And similarly, we looked at part two, which I'll describe later, but it's basically a downstream biomarker of inflammation. And similarly, the aged animals demonstrated increased levels of this pro-inflammatory biomarker. Related the C5-6 segments, once again, looking at the pain pressure thresholds at the same two points, and we saw a very robust 40% decrease in pain sensitivity. And the response seemed to last for the 15 minutes. It didn't go back to baseline or didn't even really approach baseline at that point. Mm -hmm.